Gakane, Kate Wheel of Fortrogdi, our Shomaranga. Hello, it's Misha Muntor Johanna. August is Misha Muntor Eleanor. And you're watching this because you are preparing to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation and Holy Communion for the first time and it's all very exciting. It is super exciting and these sacraments are important celebrations for you, for your family, your teachers and friends and of course the whole parish. And while we will be focusing on helping you to prepare to receive the sacraments for the first time, we will regularly remind you that first should not mean last. Sacraments strengthen in faith and love and help us to grow closer to God and, and each other. And so it's important for us to celebrate these sacraments regularly. Hopefully these lessons will help you to celebrate these sacraments well, whether you're celebrating them for the first time or the hundredth mm. time. Each celebration is very important. That's true and we are really looking forward to helping you to prepare for these sacraments and we really hope that you enjoy the lessons. So let's get this lesson started. Yeah. Are you ready to look at the sensational, spectacular, splendidly super sacraments? Wow, that's a lot of S's, Eleanor. I think you need to calm down. I know, I know, I know. But it's all very exciting, isn't it? Well, it is indeed. So over the next three lessons, we're going to be helping you to prepare to celebrate the sacraments of reconciliation and Holy Communion for the first time. And remember, children, first does not mean last. Mm. We should celebrate these sacraments regularly. And hopefully these lessons will help you to make the most of each celebration. In this lesson, we're going to look at the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now, some of you may have already celebrated this sacrament and others of you haven't celebrated it yet. Either way, it would be good to learn more about reconciliation. Some people also call this sacrament confession because you go to confess your sins as part of it, but we call it reconciliation. Reconciliation is a big word, isn't it? Mm. There's a lot of letters. Do you know how many? Uh, uh, 14? I don't know. It's a hard word to spell too. Boys and girls, do you know what reconciliation means? I, I do, but because it's a word we do not hear a lot of the time, it would be good, Johanna, if you could help us understand it a bit more. That's no bother. So I have a chart here with other words that start with the letter R that might help us to understand reconciliation. The first word is reconnect. We've all had moments when something became disconnected, to be it like the broadband, the phone or a computer game. And sadly, when something is disconnected, it doesn't work. So to reconnect means to fix something or to bring back together. So reconciliation is like when we reconnect with each other and God. And what's the next word you have in mind? Um, it is the word reunited. So if we found a lost dog, we would want to reunite it with its owner. Also like if a band broke up and finally got back together, we would say that the band have reunited. So to be reunited means to be back as one, to be no longer separated. So reconciliation means that we would be reunited back as one with God and each other. Did you say that you have another word with beginning with R? Oh, I, I did actually. I'll give you a clue though. Imagine a piece of furniture or car that's really old. It might be marked or broken hmm. or unstable. And then when someone decides to work really hard in it, they fix it and they fix what's broken. They polish it, paint it, shine it up, and it's almost as good as new. Can you think of the word we use to describe what happened? Don't worry, boys and girls. If you can't, it's, it's, it's a hard one. I think I know, but only because my dad loves to fix old cars, is the word restore, because restore means to fix or make something as good as new. Am I right? You are indeed, Johanna. Mahu. So when you're trying to understand what reconciliation means, you can think of these words. It's about reconnecting, reuniting and restoring. That's a lot of R's, Eleanor. It is all right, but each of these words help us to understand how important reconciliation is. Because reconciliation is about making peace and reuniting and reconnecting us with God and each other, would it be good to look at what disconnects us from others? Hmm. That's a good idea, Jenna. Hmm. What things do we do that maybe damage our relationship with our family and friends? What type of things do we do that disconnect us from God and others? Boys and girls, can you think of things? Hmm. Maybe things you've done? I'm sure you can. We're all created in the image of God and we are all full of goodness, but we all make mistakes and we do things that sometimes we shouldn't do. Yes, and we can make good and bad choices. And these choices, both the good and the bad choices, don't just affect us, they also affect those around us. So in first class, you learned about how Jesus, as the good shepherd, would always search for the lost sheep and would bring them back, even though these sheep made bad decisions and got disconnected from the flock. Well, when we make bad decisions, in many ways, we get lost and lose our way. Now we have a big signpost here, a compass, and a GPS that a car uses for directions. So what do you think these things normally do for us? 
they help us find our way. They point us in the right direction. You see, God is like a compass in our soul and points us in the right direction of love. But sometimes we do things that are wrong and we go in the wrong direction. Let's pretend that that signpost points us in the wrong direction and names things that are disconnect us from God and others. Yes, that's a brilliant idea, Jenna. Yeah. Let's name things we do wrong. Can you think at home? Hmm. Hmm. How about when you're unfair? Because any time we don't play fairly or treat, other, treat others fairly, we go astray. Hmm. Any other ideas? How about when we're selfish? So any time we want things our own way and we don't share, or any time we just think of ourselves, we're being selfish. and We go down the wrong road. Very good. Can you think of any other words? Hmm. How about the word bully? Any time we bully someone or exclude someone, we become disconnected from God and others and we lose our way. Have you any other? Would the word lie be a good one? Yeah. yeah. Whenever we tell someone a lie and we aren't honest, we damage our relationship with them and also with God and we go off in the wrong path again. I'm sure you can think of other things we could put on the signpost that lead us down the wrong road and disconnect us from God and others. Are there things that you do that damage your relationship with your parents or your friends and guardians and maybe, maybe even your brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure you can think of a few things, can't you? I know I can. Yeah. Do you know what we call the things that we do wrong that like disconnect us or damage our relationships? It's a three-letter word, and it starts with an S. I'm sure you know it. Can you think? Three letters starting mm -hmm. with S. Mm -hmm. It's not sad, mm -hmm. although when we do wrong, we can make ourselves and others sad. It's sin, isn't it? We sin when instead of following Jesus, we do things that are not loving towards other, other people and towards God. Anytime we make bad choices and do things that we know are wrong, we're going astray and we harm our relationship with God and others. We make bad choices when we don't listen to the little voice inside us called our conscience. So our conscience helps us to know the difference between right and wrong. It guides us just like a compass or like a GPS guides people on their journey. I know GPS stands for Global Positioning System. Hmm. They're big words, aren't they? <laughs> but today we could say that our conscience is like a God positioning system that directs us towards God and love. But sometimes we don't listen to it or we just don't follow it. Yeah. So now, Eleanor, this could sound a little strange, so bear with me. Um, it's not just when we do things wrong, but sometimes the good things that we don't do are sins, you know. Really, Johanna? Yeah. Well, I thought sins were the things we do wrong. They are, but also sometimes the good things we don't do are sins. Now, boys and girls, can you think of an example of this? So, it's not easy, I know, but imagine if you saw someone hurting or hungry or cold and we could have helped but we didn't. That's a sin, you know? That's really interesting. Mm. Could you give us a few scenarios, Johanna, and we will see if the girls and boys watching could help us decide how to stay on the right path and avoid sin. Care calor. That's a good idea, actually, Eleanor. Right, uh, I'll start with a girl called Sarah. So Sarah is playing with her friends, but she nips into the bathroom. When she comes back out, the friends have started a new game and she isn't allowed to join straight away. So Sarah, she gets upset and she calls her best friend an unkind name. Now, what do you think of Sarah's choices? How would you have reacted? Hmm? Well, we can all understand how Sarah felt, as none of us like to be left out of a game, no. even for a moment. But do you think Sarah made the right decision? What could she have done better? So, think about it. Sarah was upset, but instead of being patient and waiting, she called her best friend a name which was not loving and was not nice. So, right, here's another scenario. See what you think. Keen's Aunt Catherine gave him a bag of sweets to share with his brother Oren. Now Keen loved those particular sweets and he didn't want to share them. So he nipped out to the garden and he ate them all and never told Oren. Now, what do you think about that? Is what Keen did wrong even though Oren didn't know about it? 
I'm sure that you don't need me to tell you that what Cain did was a sin. Mm. Remember, we sin when we act in ways that are not loving towards other people and towards God. Cain did something that he knew was wrong and it wasn't loving towards his brother Oren. Hmm, what should he have done instead? Well, even though like he loved those sweets, the right thing to do was to share them, you know? And does it matter that his aunt and his brother didn't find out? What do you think? See, it doesn't matter whether or not we get caught for want of a better phrase. If we do something wrong, it's wrong. And it, it still harms our relationship with God and other. Last scenario. John was walking through the junior infant yard and he saw one of the boys had fallen and was crying. But John was eager to join his friends playing football, so he didn't stop and he walked straight on by. Boys and girls, what are you thinking? Now, John didn't cause the boy to fall, but remember, sometimes sins are the times we don't do the good thing or the right thing that we were in the position to do. Mm. What should John have done, do you think? Hmm. Mm. Well, he could have stopped to check on the smaller boy and help him. So boys and girls, while God does not want us to sin, it's important to remember that even when we do sin, God will never stop loving us. Also, it's important to remember that there's a great word that helps us to heal relationships that have been harmed. A word that can make nearly every situation better. Mm. Do you know what the word is? It starts with the same letter as sin. No doubt you guessed it, boys and girls. It's the word sorry, isn't it? And it's a really great word when we admit that we did something wrong and we say sorry, great things can happen. Oh, oh, it's Father Christian, oh. Tara Shuck. Good as a thought you are. This mirror, uh, I hope I'm not disturbing you now. Oh? I tell you, sorry if I am, but I just wanted to leave these in for something I'd like to show you later. Oh. Uh, actually, funny that you should start by saying sorry, Father Chris, because we were just talking about how important the word sorry is. Oh yeah, it is indeed. And actually, I hope to show you something later that will demonstrate that the importance of the word sorry. So that's why I brought that in. Oh, well, if you don't mind, could you show us now? I think we'd love to see it at home. Uh, if, if you're okay with that, sure. If you're okay with that and if the children are okay with it. Yeah, it's totally fine with us and I'm sure the children would love to see it, wouldn't you? Okay, so, well look, what we do, I, I've brought in a bowl of clear water. This is a bowl of clear water, sparkling water. We can remind us, it can remind us of our baptism and how we're full of goodness. Is the water clear? Mm-hmm. So. Can I see through it? You can. I can see through it. Yeah. If I hold it a certain way, could I see my reflection in it? Uh, you could, yeah. I could, I could. Could I drink it? Well, uh, yeah. it's, it's clear enough to drink, Father Chris, but I'm not sure drinking from a bowl would be a good example for the boys and girls. No. You're probably right. <laughs> I won't do that. I'm only messing. But the water is it's sparkling. It's like our soul, full of goodness, uh, especially after our baptism, right? But sadly, we, we make mistakes. Remember, sin is the, are the things we do wrong that disconnect us from and cut us off from each other. For each sin you name, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a drop of liquid into the water. So if you name a few sins for me and I put a drop in, is that okay? Yeah. Well, sometimes we're selfish and don't share. Okay, so we'll put a drop in for that, uh, Eleanor. There. Um, sometimes we don't play fairly and we're a bit unkind. Mm -hmm. Right, that can happen. Yeah. Okay, we'll put another drop in for that. Sometimes we call each other names and bully each other. Okay, yes, sadly these things happen. We'll put in two drops for that because of the bullying. <laughs> and also we sometimes can tell lies. Right, okay, we'll put a drop in for that. <laughs> um, I wonder could the boys and girls think of things that they've done wrong? Mm. We'll give you a chance. You think about it and I'll put a drop in. How about we just add a drop for the times that we didn't do something good when we could have? Oh, that's, yeah. that's a really good idea. We'll put in a drop for that. Okay, well done. Oh, look at the water. Has it changed? Mm. Oh, it looks disgusting. Yeah, I don't well, like it. Well, it's no longer sparkling and you can't really see through it. And you definitely can't see your own reflection. And you would not want to go and drink that, Father Chris. Not that we encourage drinking from bowls, boys and girls. <laughs> You're dead right, Johanna. When we make the wrong decisions and we go down the wrong road as such, we sadly aren't at our best mm. and, and we hurt others and we hurt ourselves. But remember, boys and girls, what word did we say that can help these situations? A word that reconnects us and reconciles us. Have a think. Of course, it's the word sorry. 
So when we celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation, we confess our sins to God and we say sorry and God forgives us. Exactly. And here I have a joke representing God's forgiveness. It's got God's mercy and God's love written on it. And in the sacrament, God pours his mercy and love and forgiveness into our hearts. And look what happens. Wow! Wow! So all our sins are just washed away and we are back to our sparkling best. Exactly. And also, watch this. I'm going to have to put it down for a second. And I'm going to add... We'll name something, think of something we might like to do wrong, and we're going to try and add another drop. And it resists it, you see. Ah. So we receive a grace in the sacrament, a strength to be better. So when I added an extra drop, it sort of resisted the drop because there's a strength given to us in the sacrament to be the best that we can be. Wow. wow. So not only are we forgiven, but God gives us strength to resist sin and to be better? Exactly. You can see wow. it kind of the extra sin I added, we can't see it. And in reconciliation, we just admit our mistakes, we say sorry, and then God forgives us and he gives us a, a brand new start. Wow. And look, while God does not want us to sin, it's important to remember that even when we do, God will not stop loving us. And when we celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, God forgives us and he gives us this brand new start. Now, I better head, right, to Miss Passmore uh, for a moment. But I'll be back later because I, I have something to show you later. Is that okay? Great. Sorry about that. No Slaan. problem. See Slaan you Slaan 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 Father Chris. Wow, it's no wonder we should be excited about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It's a great celebration of God's love and forgiveness. Yes, so let's get excited about God's fantastic, fabulous, fascinating, flamboyant forgiveness. Eleanor, calm down. I know, I know, but aren't we very lucky to have this sacrament? Do you think that now might be a nice time to say a prayer and sing a song as we celebrate this? Yeah. Let's pray the Confitio as it is one of the prayers we pray at Mass and we also learn it as we prepare for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So join in at home as we pray together. Let's begin by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And don't forget that you mentioned that we should sing a song. What song will we sing? Oh, you'll have to guess. Okay. Give you a clue. This song is about a character Jesus meets. Uh -huh. He's a small man who used to make bad choices, and he was selfish and cheated people. But when he met Jesus, he changed his ways. I'm sure the children at home knows who it is. Do you? It's Zacchaeus, isn't it? It is indeed. So let's join together and sing a song called Zacchaeus.
enjoyed that. Zacchaeus reminds us that God's forgiveness and love is for everyone. And in the song, it said that he was changed from being a greedy little man into being a humble little man who made up for all his mistakes. Now, let's watch a video about him. God's story, Zacchaeus. So part of God's story is about Zacchaeus, and it begins like this. Once there was a man named Zacchaeus, let's call him Zac, who lived in a town called Jericho. He was short, and he didn't have many friends. In fact, most people hated Zac. That's because he worked as a tax collector. See, back then people paid taxes, just like now. But instead of sending money to the government, there were men in every city whose job was taking tax money from people. Problem is, those men usually lied. Zac, like most, took a lot of extra money from a lot of people. And all those people hated him. Anyway, one day Jesus came to Zac's town and Zach wanted to see him, but so did everybody else. And remember how Zach was really short? Well, he couldn't see Jesus over everybody else's head. So guess what he did? He actually climbed up into a tree to look out over everybody. Now, imagine a grown man climbing up in a tree in the middle of a crowd. People probably thought he was crazy or weird, but Zach was willing to look weird if it meant getting closer to Jesus. From up in the tree, Zach watched as Jesus walked up Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. This was kind of like a famous person inviting themselves over, except way better. This invitation would change Zach's life. Zach scrambled down the tree to take Jesus to his house. Maybe he thought Jesus didn't know about all the money he had taken or how everybody hated him. But Jesus did know, and he loved Zach anyways. Other people saw this and they were mad. They said, Jesus has gone into the house of a sinner. They wondered how Jesus could love somebody who had lied and stole their money. The great thing is, Jesus loves all of us, even after we've done things we deserve to get in trouble for, or even after we actually get in trouble. When we see that Jesus loves us anyway, it makes us want to show that kind of love to others. At least that's what happened to Zach. Right away, he wanted to make things right with the people he had hurt. He knew that just saying, I'm sorry, wasn't enough. So he told Jesus, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor, and anyone I cheated, I will pay back four times the amount of money I took. Whoa. When Jesus saw that Zach was willing to accept his love and turn around and show it to others, he said, my friend, today God has rescued you. And even though Zach had been a liar and a thief who was hated by everyone, he became a friend of Jesus and a part of God's family that very day. And that's the story of Zacchaeus. That was great, wasn't it? Mm. Sometimes we can be like Zacchaeus. We can be selfish or greedy and be mean to others. Mm. The story of Zacchaeus also helps us to see the things we need to do to prepare for reconciliation. There are five steps involved in celebrating the sacrament. And actually, we saw a few of those steps in the Zacchaeus story. Mm. Ah, it's Father Chris, Father Rush. How are you? Father Chris, your timing is perfect. We're just getting ready to tell the children about the five steps involved in celebrating the sacrament of reconciliation. Would you like to do that? Well, that's no bothers. I just hope I will remember the steps. So <laughs> you know what I'm like. So if I forget any, you can kind of remind me. Is that OK? Absolutely. Sure. Perfect. Well, the first step is where we stop and think about what we've done wrong. So it's good to take up time to stop, think what mistakes mm. we've made. Even if nobody tells us that we've done something wrong, that little inside voice, that inner compass, mm. our conscience, helps, to, helps us to see when we're not loving and kind. But you know what? It's not enough to know that we've done something wrong. We also have to feel sorry for what we've done wrong. Yeah. You know? So the second step is where we actually go and say sorry. How can anyone know we're sorry if we, we don't tell somebody or say it? Yeah. So in the sacrament, we tell the priest our sins and we say sorry. We call this part of the sacrament confession. It's important to remember that the priest can never tell anybody mm. what we've said. So that's good to know. Mm. Uh, thirdly, thirdly, we accept the penance that the priest gives us and we pray a prayer called the act of sorrow. Penance is something that the priest gives the person to show that they are sorry. He also asks the person to say a prayer called the act of sorrow. Mm. It's a bit like the Zacchaeus story that you've just watched. Uh, but he was sorry, but he made up for it then by making up to the people that he cheated. So we show we're sorry by doing penance and saying a prayer. 
And we usually do this afterwards. Mm. So that's Now four, the priest prays the words of absolution. It's a very special prayer spoken in God's name that forgives us our sins and gives us a brand new start. So to absolve us, big word. Yeah. The final step then is where we are committed, like Zacchaeus, to try and be better. So we leave determined to try and be loving and kind and not to sin again. Mm. Whoa, that sounds like a lot to remember, Father Chris. It does, all right. Mm. But listen, a priest normally will help you and he will know <gasps> that sometimes people might struggle to remember all those things. Mm. He'll remind you of the steps and what you have to say. So you don't have to be worried. And what's the best way to prepare for the first reconciliation? Okay, yeah, that's a, a good, good question, Johanna. Yeah. Well, firstly, it's probably about learning the lines that you say as well as learning the act of sorrow prayer. So that, that's probably the best. So it might help the boys and girls watching if you showed us what happened in the sacrament. So maybe Eleanor, you could pretend that you're celebrating your first reconciliation. And because I think that you make way more mistakes than me. <laughs> Thanks a bunch, Shanna. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, it might be good to actually watch this piece of the lesson with a parent or guardian. So they also get to see what happens when you celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation for the first time. So maybe you could pause the lesson and go get a parent or guardian if they aren't already with you. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, but You're if pausing. the children hit pause, did we not have to uh, pause? No, what are you like? You don't have to pause. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> okay, Father Chris. What preparation should I make at home before I come to church? Well, it would be good to learn the prayers, to practice what you say, mm. and it would be very important to think about what you've done wrong. Mm. Uh, the worksheet that accompanies this lesson mm. will help you prepare, so that would be good to look at. Mm. So if you have learned your prayers, practiced the responses, and thought of what you want to say sorry for, are you well prepared? To be honest, yeah, you are indeed, Johanna. If you do all that, you're doing great. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put on both an alb and a stole, as the priest normally will be wearing these things. Oh. Okay, let's pretend that, Eleanor, you've just arrived, and mm -hmm. I will greet you. So, hello, Eleanor. How are you? Well, I'm good, thanks. Um, I'm a little nervous, actually. <laughs> oh, there's, don't be nervous, Eleanor. Look, I know you've practised, and don't worry if you forget any. I'll help, right? Oh. You've nothing to be nervous about. This is a special moment when you celebrate that God loves you no matter what, right? So let's begin, Eleanor, by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father, and the of the Son, and, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, Eleanor, right, what you say the opening greeting. Remember the opening greeting? It goes like this. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I did not show love when. Okay, so... Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I did not show love when I... Now, normally here, Eleanor, you would name the things that you're sorry for, yeah. right? But I don't think the children need to hear you, <laughs> okay. you name those things, okay? So, aside from that, nobody ever knows what you say but the priest. And he can never tell anybody what he's heard. So, mm. that's kind of it. Mm. Actually, Father Chris, do people feel ashamed when they tell you their sins? Uh, naturally, we'll feel disappointed in ourselves. But remember, we all make mistakes and we all make bad choices. But it's good to say sorry, and God's love is greater than any of our mistakes. And once I've said what I'm sorry for, what happens next? Good question. So, you've just said what you're sorry for, and then yeah. the priest gives you penance. We know that penance can be a prayer or an action that you can do to show that you're sorry. Mm. So, Eleanor, your penance is, let me think, is to say a prayer. And to do something nice for somebody today. Huh. Now, and now what you do is you pray the act of sorrow to show that you're sorry. Is that okay? Y yes, it is. Um, so, oh my God, I thank you for loving me. I'm sorry for all my sins, for not loving others and not loving you. Help me to live like Jesus and not sin again. Amen. Mahu, Eleanor. That was great. Thanks. Now, I will pray the special words of absolution that remind you that God forgives you and loves you no matter what. Now, I won't pray all the words now, okay. but I will share with you the last line because it might help you. And the last line, uh, you bless yourselves during the last line. So the prayer of absolution finishes with the line, I absolve you from all your sins, Father, Son, Son and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, how was that? That was great. Like, I see what you mean when you say we've nothing to be nervous about. No. The priest will make, help you make a good confession and, and remind you of what the things that you need to say if you forget them, 
right? So he'll definitely do that. And then remember that when God forgives you, you receive a brand new start. You leave the sacrament like a saint, yes. without any sins on your soul or conscience. Well, she won't stay a saint for long, Father Chris. <laughs> oh, poor Eleanor. Uh, none of us do, Johanna. We, we all make mistakes. But as long as we keep trying to be saints, well, that's the main thing. Mm. Father Chris, would you mind staying with us as we're due to finish our lesson? Um, would you like to finish with a prayer? That would be lovely, Gurv Mila. Um, so we were going to begin by the blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we light this candle, asking God's light to guide us always. Now, I might borrow this. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to show you. This is a tea junction sign, right? This signpost reminds us that on the road of life, we'll always have decisions to make. And when it's difficult or we're not sure what way to go, we listen to our inner voice, our conscience. And what we do is we point this sign and we look to the cross, mm. okay? Ooh. And when we think about that, we go, what decision would Jesus make? And we ask God to help us to make the right decisions. Right. Eleanor, can I give you these signs to help with our prayer? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So the response to our prayer is, Lord, lead us on the right path. Lord, Lord lead, lead us, us on, on the, the right, right path. path. So help us to be more accepting and to include others. Lord, lead us on the right path. Help us to be honest and true. Lord, Lord lead, lead us, us on, on the, the right, right path. Help us to be fair to all. Lord, Lord lead, lead us, us on, on the right, right path. Help us to be kind and generous. Lord, lead us on the right path. So let's finish up by praying the Confitior together again. I, I confess, confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Amen. So let's bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks very much for watching, boys and girls. That was a brilliant class. And we hope you learned a little more about the Sacrament of Reconciliation and God's incredible love and forgiveness for us. So don't forget to fill in your worksheets and to get your parents or guardians to fill in the shared bit with you. We really look forward to seeing you in your next lesson on Holy Communion. Gravmila, mila, 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 m